Okay, we got the batteries out, and uh, sorry for the light. It's not too much light in here, and I don't have batteries to turn the lights on. But I've got my wires here, and I've got the existing battery box that I measured in between these two hold downs, and I had 17 and a quarter inches. So I made the plate to fit over this, which gives me a little over an inch and a quarter on each side to grab the plywood. And I carried it two and a quarter inches on both sides this way. So I think I've got plenty of strength. I did do a strength test on the board by putting a couple of uh, one by twos underneath it and jumped up and down on it after I fabricated it. If it can hold my weight jumping on it, I think it'll hold these two batteries. So we gotta prepare this spot now. I'm gonna drill some holes in here instead of taking this out so I can run some screws up from the bottom. Um, for those wondering why I didn't just take it out altogether, should I decide to sell the RV down the road, I wanted to be able to have the factory box back in it. I decided to use a three-quarter inch thick piece of plywood with a frame built around it to hold the batteries from moving back and forth. I'm about to try it now that I got it painted to make sure I didn't move anything accidentally. But I think it should be good. Let's take a battery. There's one. And here's two. So all I gotta do is get some straps on it now and then mount it into the coach. And I think we'll be okay. These batteries, by the way, are on Amazon, 300 amp hour each. And uh, shoot, with the 10% discount they were offering at the time, they were about $350 a piece, which, uh, I don't know how you can go wrong nowadays with that. Let's see what these uh, clamps look like. I want to make sure that we're able to have these things 100% secure. Yeah, they look pretty good. out a little. And I think these will line up on here just right. Okay, so we got the hold downs anchored. Now we got to uh, take the 100 amp hour batteries out of the RV and install this plate over top of the battery box. I did not want to cut the battery box out, so I made this 17 and a quarter inches wide. So it would fit in between the existing hold downs that are on the RV now. Never used it on material before, but let's see how it does.
Well, let it dry for a little while and we'll test it for strength. Okay, well, let's do a test fit. I think we can put this in just like so. think we can get a screw or two and from the bottom just got to check our clearance and make sure that we're not going to get through Well, let's drill the rest of the holes. I started before I turned the camera on. So we're just gonna finish up a couple more holes and get this ready. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere because of the weight of the batteries, but just wanna be safe. two, four, six, eight screws to hold that down. Let me clean this up a little bit and I'll come back when I get it ready to put the battery holder in. Okay, so I got my handy little Black & Decker portable vacuum here to clean some of this up. to decide whether I want to clean up these uh, let me bring this over here and show you I don't know whether I want to seal up these holes or leave them open there's not really any more reason to leave them open because uh, we're not using wet batteries and there's no gas so Maybe I'll just take some Gorilla tape and close them up for the time being. I did have to run up the tractor supply and get some stainless steel hardware. I got some stainless steel one inch screws and washers to put on the bottom and I'll put a little silicone under them too. And see you when I'm done. Well, they're all hooked up. I just turned everything on. It's charging through the solar. I readjusted the battery monitor on the inside to show the 600 amp hours battery bank. And I guess all I got left is to clean up stuff and recheck everything, make sure I have everything tight. 